Hi everyone, this is Nick Skillicorn, CEO and founder of Improvides, and I want to talk to you today about anonymous collaboration and why it's basically an epic fail. You see, the world's getting more and more connected every day. Never before have we had these opportunities for people to work together across different offices in different cities, even across different time zones and continents. And now it's possible for people who've never even met each other or even spoken to each other to collaborate on some of the most difficult challenges that ever existed. Simply, this type of open innovation can find solutions to challenges which individual teams can't by themselves. But there's one major issue which if not addressed will instantly kill your ability to deliver anything, and that is attempting anonymous collaboration. Now, I use the term anonymous collaboration to mean any situation where you are directly working on something with someone who you've not established any sort of foundations for a working relationship. In these cases, the human touch is completely absent, and in most cases, all that's really required is to start at the beginning with something that lets you get a better feeling of who the other person is, to develop rapport. The importance of this is that it begins to establish an ability for both of you to understand the subtext of what the other person is talking about, and this is absolutely vital when collaborating, where both parties are actively contributing, quite often simultaneously. There are many examples where you may have someone working with you but without the purpose of developing something new, such as your accountant handling your end-of-year taxes, your IT manager handling your computing systems, or your security guards at your buildings. In these situations, it's not nearly as important to understand the thought process of both parties. And these sorts of processes and services can therefore also be effectively outsourced to people who you might never meet or communicate with directly. However, when it comes to breakthrough innovations, in the history of humanity, nearly every single one has been a collaborative effort, either developed and refined by groups, or by individuals building on knowledge and ideas of other members of society. In fact, off the top of my head, the only examples of innovation by a single individual I know of are these sorts of freak discoveries, such as the accidental discoverer of penicillin. And when you're learning from and working with other people to change things and to develop new solutions, you need to build on each other's progress, which requires you to understand each other's direction and instructions. This is vital to make sure you're moving towards the same target, but also so that on the way there you can understand the reasons why the other person may be having difficulty. In an office environment, this initial relationship building happens organically over time. This is because less than 10% of what we communicate is actually based on the words that we use. The other 90% is based on body language, intonation, eye contact, and other subtle cues that get lost in written words. But when you're working with someone you're unlikely to ever meet, either in another office or someone like a remote freelancer, then a lack of understanding can lead to you moving in very different directions. Let me tell you a little story which really exemplifies this. See, at the moment, Improvides is developing a web-based assessment tool for people's ability to generate ideas. For this, we've employed some freelance coders in India via an outsourcing website. Now, while finding people able to do the job and have the skills was simple and cost-effective enough, issues started once the work actually began. First of all, communication was lacking, and after sending instructions, I'd really have no idea where progress was until I had to chase them. When I got through updates, Sometimes they just ignored aspects which I thought I'd made very clear were vital for us, but which they hadn't interpreted that way. And finally, it's never been made clear how much of my work fits into their total workload, meaning that I've got no idea whether or not they're actually focusing on my requirements or just doing the highest level things required on numerous projects at the same time. If it had been possible to get initial human interaction, such as by having an initial Skype session, it would have enabled me to understand their working practices and them to understand my actual requirements right from the beginning. The scary thing for you is that you may not even realize how often there is anonymous collaboration within your own organization, perhaps even involving you. Think of any time you've received a request from someone you don't know, asking you to produce something for them, or even something as simple as you sending them something, which is not really any work for you, but really important for them. The vast majority of people, and you've probably done it too, will have ignored such requests from people they know nothing about. This can also be a distinct issue when dealing with hierarchies in business. People in management positions are often more likely to expect immediate results and feedback when they make a request to someone, even people who don't know them. Perhaps someone in a different department, leading to misunderstandings of importance and context and further issues down the line. 
So, what are the action steps which you can do to prevent these issues? Simply put, put in one extra minute right at the beginning of the relationship to find out more about each other. Find out if the people you work with have kids, if they're from the city or elsewhere, uh, what events they enjoy watching, things like that. The content you get here really isn't that important, whereas the act of finding out about these things changes the dynamic between the two of you away from one which is a completely formal one. This will enable you to collaborate more effectively long term, and will also allow you to begin finding out each other's strengths and work-related superpowers. But that's another story for an upcoming article. So look up from your desk, who have you not spoken to yet? You and them might just end up creating the next big thing. To stay up to date with all of our articles and improve your own ability to generate ideas and be more innovative, subscribe to our mailing list using the form in the top right corner of this page, and follow us on our social media networks including Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn using the buttons below. Thanks for listening!